I bought my dream guitar this year. After 15 years of pondering, considering, saving, 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 thinking, thinking, overthinking, I bought um, my dream guitar. It's a 2013 Gibson Les Paul Studio, and it's at the back if you want to take a look at it later. Want to play with it, that's all good. This guitar, she is tall, she is dark, she is curvy, she's beautiful, she shimmers, and she's a bit of a mystery still to me. I'm still learning what she sounds like. She's always respected when she enters a room. And no matter what I name her, this guitar carries all of her history with her, no matter where she goes. You can see her history in the makeup of her body. You can hear her history in her specific sound. You can try to change or modify pieces of her, but she remains unabashedly and simultaneously engaged in the history that made her and the future she will make. This guitar is a full-grown woman. I was a little girl, I was only 11, when I realized I really, 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 really needed to play guitar. Um, every cell in my body yearned to play guitar. Um, and for three years, I asked politely, can I have a guitar? And I was told in a very factual manner by all manner of people, Indian girls don't play guitars. Boys play guitars. White boys play guitars. This is apparently simply a matter of fact. Sure, but can I have a guitar? <laughs> By the time I was 14, I had acquired an acoustic guitar for my 14th birthday that my parents lovingly bought for me as immigrant parents trying to do the best that they could. <laughs> <laughs> but I very quickly grew tired of the soft strings, of the soft sound. I knew my sound was heavier, my sound was grittier, my sound was darker, that I needed to be louder. It's my 17th birthday. It's overcast and cold with uh, word that the supercell thunderstorm is approaching and the air feels electric like anything can happen. And today I'm getting my very first dirty, sexy, loud electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, yes. <laughs> I get dressed in my punk rock uniform so I don't embarrass myself at the guitar shop. I, kn <laughs> I know by now that Indian girls don't play guitars. Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm the only one and I don't really understand why. I pull my frizzy black curls back in a slick ponytail. I put on my baseball t-shirt, my ripped jeans, my blue Converse sneakers. I look the part. Me, my mom, my dad, my sister, my best friend, <laughs> my other best friend. <laughs> um, we all jump into cars and we make our way to the guitar shop downtown. Yes, we are a caravan. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to being in a South Asian family. We insist that everyone join our caravan. <laughs> Everyone is welcome in this caravan, and you must be included in this momentous occasion. That's just how we roll. <laughs> it's starting to drizzle as I make my way out of the car and onto Queen Street West. Um, it's the epitome of so hip it hurts in Toronto. It's the age of 17. It's cold outside, but I feel so totally super cool. <laughs> like... This is so dating myself, oh my god. It's like Saved by the Bell cool when they walk into Max's restaurant and everyone knows their names. <laughs> Except I'm really nervous too because I know that not everyone can say my name. I know I don't have a white boy name. I know I don't have a white boy body. But I can fake it pretty okay. Uh, by design, I speak English without an accent. I listen to alternative radio stations. I know all the songs. I've learned all about the bands. I play rock music because I identified with anger and with power. But my anger isn't ever seen. Uh, it isn't public anger, like in the mosh pits. Um, and I was told that there are no brown girls in mosh pits, uh, or very rarely in kind of the public eye at all. Brown girls in public images are starving, begging, being sold, being saved, dying, or worse. I'm not any of those things. As an immigrant child with an education and a safe enough place to live, I am aware that I have privilege. And with this privilege, I need to make change. The change is to ensure that an education and a safe enough place to live are no longer a privilege. To make change, I know I must have power. Who has power? 
in public, I had only ever really seen on music stages, political stages, academic stages, in front of microphones with instruments of powers, guitars, lecterns, presentations, white boys. If I am to make change, I need a stage and I need an instrument of change and my guitars were gonna be the ticket. And if white boys played guitars, and I played guitars, and we're all equal, and we're all the same as I have been told all my life in Canada, then I must be just like these white boys. Yes, yes, this makes perfect sense, okay. So my multicultural caravan <laughs> from the inner Toronto suburbs walks into the guitar shop and is immediately confronted uh, with youth in flannel and multiple piercings and that uninterested flat out sneer on their face. It is a guitar shop and guitar snobs abound. I'm so elated, however, to be, have my family inside a guitar shop <laughs> that I don't realize that we've kind of been left alone for 10, 15, 20, 25, 35 minutes. We are left to stare at the guitars hanging high above our heads, jewels just out of reach, gleaming in the last of the daylight before the storm rolls in. In these nearly 40 minutes, no one has come to help any of the six people in my caravan. I have wanted this all my life, but I'm still scared. I'm scared to ask questions. I'm scared to look like a fool. I don't, I'm scared to look like I don't know what I'm doing because as it is, I'm not supposed to be here anyway. Indian girls don't do this. Why am I doing this? Finally, I ask one of the staff if they can help me. It's the first time I've ever bought an electric guitar. I thought they'd see the look of joy on my face and they'd be ecstatic that, uh, you know, me and my immigrant family are trying to join their caravan. No, they don't really care. It's not very important to them. A dude in his 20s kind of regrettably comes by and says, hey, you know, what do you want? I was like, an electric guitar, please. What kind of electric guitar? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, could you help me find a good fit. And he looks at me at this point like I've killed this cat or something, like uh, there's something just outrageous I've asked. He points over there, I guess these ones will do. He's pointed to the cheapest guitars in the store that are hanging the lowest. They are the knockoff versions of the real guitars that are hanging out of reach. He never bothers to bring down one of the shiny guitars from up above that we've all been staring at. He just pointed to the closest thing with which I was to make do. It makes me feel like an imposter. I don't want to play a knockoff brand. I'm just learning about your guitars. I'm trying to understand your guitars, and I feel I want your guitars. I'm here. I'm excited. I've tried to learn as much as I can. Why won't you take the time to help me no more, even though I showed up and I was enthusiastic? When you ask me in public about my ethnic origin, or if Hindus meditate, or how to make XY curry, um, I teach you even with my soft voice. Why won't you teach me? Why should I just know? But no worry, I would love this guitar with all my heart. <laughs> I will make do with this imposter. I will make do with being an imposter. I realize that I am not an Indian girl who plays guitars. I am an imposter, a slowly deflating imposter. Okay, I'll take that one. It's blue and white. It looks like the one I saw Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day play at Woodstock 94. <laughs> you went to Woodstock 94? <laughs> no, I, I watched it on TV um, in between puja ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, well, they're religious rites. You, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You wouldn't understand. The clerk shows us a pretty blue amplifier. It's at that point... For those of you who don't know, electric guitars need amplifiers. I need this box in order to amplify this sound out into the world. And it's called the Blue Devil. With my blue sneakers, my new blue guitar, it's perfect. The only issue is it is a floor model. You'll have to take this one off the floor as it's the only one left. Okay, no problem. Um, it looks like it might rain. Does it come in a box? No. No box. It's a floor model. Final sale, take it as it is. Okay, <laughs> me and my best friend Emily are now waiting at the cash register for all of my gorgeous gear to make it to the front. I'm beaming, imposter guitar and all. There's even a 
cute boy at the counter <laughs> with his own guitar and amp being purchased. Well then, Emily looks down and realizes that dude has the same amp as you. His amp is in a box. And the box says it comes with free shit. Where's your free shit? I won't lie. I was very sad at this point. I, I just wanted the box for the rain. I didn't care about the free shit. I wanted to take care of this thing that would project my sound out into the world. And you don't understand how important that box that's going to project my sound out into the world is. Because I'm not a white boy. And you're not an Indian girl. And I have to translate this to you. But I'm only 17. And I don't have my voice yet. The cute young man says to me, oh yeah, you totally need the foot switch. This amp is designed as a digital workstation, so without the foot switch, you're like only getting 50% of the amp's capability. Didn't they tell you? No. Can I have a box? We don't have any more boxes. Sorry, that, could, that guy must have gotten the last one. I'll try to find you the foot switch. OK, well, maybe we could also get a big plastic bag to cover the amp, because it's really raining now outside. So here I am on my 17th birthday with my loving six-person caravan, my imposter knockoff guitar, my amp hidden in a big, thick black garbage bag as if it's you know, this, this small token that I'm taking home. And I, I didn't understand. I, I did not understand why I felt so sad. I felt that you had told me we were the same. And somehow in this interaction, I've learned that we are not the same. And I don't, I will never feel the same again. With my imposter guitar, I make one rule. I refuse to play other people's songs. But God damn it, I'm going to learn what I sound like. I'm going to rock the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> 15 years later, after many years of rocking stages, my beloved blue knockoff guitar was well overdue for replacement. I saved up enough money. I went to a guitar shop, and I finally got to buy my top shelf guitar. I walked in alone. I looked at the guitars overhead. I asked a salesperson to help me. He asked me if I was purchasing a gift for someone else. <laughs> no, I am purchasing this gift for me. What, would you, what do you want? A Gibson Les Paul Studio, 2013. Not the 2014 edition with the idiotic anniversary falling on the 12th fret. Not the 2015 edition with the nearly insulting autorobotic tuning heads. <laughs> we don't carry the 2013 anymore. Then find it for me. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> My imposter guitar forced me to find my voice. And this new dark beauty guitar is authentic and the dream I now live out in public every day, which as a brown skinned girl, now woman, is an inherent act of power. For the first time, this guitar is not an alter ego. This guitar is complete. She is a manifestation of all the things I'd like myself to strive to be, even if I can't always be those things. I'm building a new construct of performance. I've built my own stage. I've curated my instruments of power. I want to share the little knowledge I've gained with anyone who is ex as excited as I am. And this is a powerful and political act to be heard as oneself, not as a knockoff, not as an imposter. Much like my dream guitar, I want to be seen, to be heard, to belong, to be loved as this unabashed beauty who comes with her own dark and light, her own history and future, and a sound that is hopefully soon to be understood. Thank you.